did, did you see Javita at that event with Trump this week? You see my scarf she had on? I was three. three. I, I, you know, it's we're in August. I thought she would, you know, pull back on August. You know, maybe do two scarves, one scarf. That's uh, three scarves. August. You know, the, the heat wave is really big in Los Angeles. I wonder if she goes to the beach in like seven scarves. Good evening, everybody. This is LLA. I hope you're good and safe. I'm here, you're here, and you know, I don't have a scarf on, but I feel very refreshed and happy to join you and you to join me for Evening's LLA tonight. Our one hour program, we block the stars every night at 645, starts with a check and then goes to EIDL. Boy, I asked for something last night, but I didn't get it, but I guess it was my fault. <laughs> Yesterday's video on EIDL was um, a salute to our 200,000th subscribers uh, in 111. 112 days, which is absolutely insane. It's a YouTube record. But I said, can you drop some co questions about EIDL so I have something to talk about? I really enjoyed yesterday going over your old, going over EIDL questions on camera like the old days. Uh, and so I looked at, I got ready to film just a few minutes ago. I looked and I'm like, oh, 750 comments. Wow. I mean, that's a lot for EIDL. Um, I mean, the other videos now do like 4,000 comments, but even that, I was like, 700, oh, I was like, oh, congratulations, 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 okay, um, congratulations, congratulations, oh, a scarf, 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 uh, bloody six, 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 no questions, so, um, I guess I'm gonna wing it, I was really missing to do some questions, because I really, you know what I love about questions is with EIDL, there's so many strange things that happen with the loan process that you don't know them until you see other people hap have them happen to them, and then they they uh, communicate to you. The way that this channel picked up was I was hearing people's problems and then figuring out how to fix them. And here in the last 24 hours, I actually had three people have the same problem. And the problem was they were stuck. And you know, I do stuck loans. That's, that's what I enjoy doing. They were stuck. They had a loan offer. They had a loan offer. They accepted it. They're in the portal. It says processing or pending. It has the amount. It has those three things below, you know, um, confirm your identity, confirm your bank account. They had done that. It was all completed. And yet they were stuck. And so all those three people had gone through my unstick process and uh, stick figure. No, unstick process, but they were still stuck. So I clearly know that that triggers two possibilities. One, unable to verify identity, or two, unable to verify bank account. So if you are stuck because you've accepted a loan and you're still pending a processing, one of them is just, you know, they just haven't gotten to you somewhere in the, in the administration of stuff made you stick, and there's no reason for you to be stuck. Um, but there are other people who are stuck because of unable to verify business existence and unable to verify um, bank account. The way they usually do that is a loan officer calls you up and says, hey, send me some information, usually like a, a back in front of your driver's license, um, you know, uh, your checking account number, something like that. And then you're fine. And then you usually have to wait. The wait time is not like 24 hours, it's sometimes like a couple days, could be five days. So the problem is sometimes you don't know if you're stuck because of unable, unable to verify identity or unable to verify um, bank account information. Uh, but that wasn't supposed to be the point of this video. How did I get on that? Uh, this video is about collateralization of loans um, because I haven't done that subject in a while and I really do think that's important. And you know, here we are. Collateralization of loans with SBA uh, kicks in if your loan is $25,000 and $1 or more. So $25,000 and $1 or more makes your loan collateralized. Ha Do you have a different contract for collateralization? No, it's the same contract that any non-collateralized person has. How do you know that you're collateralized? Because it actually says in the contract, if you're over $25,000, this loan is collateralized. Well, and then some people get a little confused about like 
well, if it's collateralized, don't I tell them, you know, where my Rolls Royce is? I mean, what? how do I become collateralized if they don't know where the thing is? Ultimately, you know, it's a big question. This is not a collateralization agreement in which you actually have to disclose the asset. So for some of you... Um, that has been an issue of contention. Some viewers certainly make an understanding that if your business doesn't own the asset, but simply rents the asset, well, then it's not your asset. Or if, the ass or if you borrow the asset from someone else, then it's not your asset. Here's an example. Um, let's say you're an Uber Lyft driver and you got, a, you got an SBA loan. Is your car collateral? Well, if you lease your car, it's not your car. You just make payments on some car. It's not your car. It's a, it's a lease. Well, that's not collateral. It's not your car. But if if you, you know, if you're Uber and Lyft and you, the car is under your name and you got the loan under your name, then, hey, car could be collateral. The Ultimately, one of the biggest concerns is the SBA contract. And this is not the first time I've done this video. I've done this video probably 224 times, two dozen times, and it's been a very popular subject, was that SBA's collateralization is not clear. You know, we can we understand Javita wears scars, but when it comes to collateralization, that is just not clear whatsoever. So what is collateral, and how do they collateralize it, and what happens that as to something goes south with the collateral? Let me go over that right now. First, this, the contract actually says that anything that's working capital will be considered collateral. And trust me, that has really spawned hundreds of videos because the contract doesn't define working capital. It's strange to sign a contract with a, a term so important in the contract like working capital and not have it defined. But working capital is defined in other guidances from SBA documents and federal, federal ordinances that were to presume that those are sort of uh, custom and practice in a way, that they're sort of understood to be working capital. So as you sit here and you wonder, is this working capital? Is this working capital? This is what you should assume. You should assume that anything of your business is working capital. Um, the bank account, the chair, the table, the lamp, the uh, Accounts receivable. Um, if you're a trucker, the truck. If you're, uh, you know, if you clean sea dews, uh, the soap <laughs> is collateral. Uh, you know, CDs in the bank, securities owned by the company, those are collateral. Now you may say, why? That's is that working capital? Well, it's just not safe to assume they aren't. And ultimately, it's not a, not a thing you want to risk. All right, so the contract itself doesn't call for what's working capital. Do you have to list the working capital? No. Okay, how do they know the working capital exists? That's sort of another rub, which I, that actually I've never done a video on. This is something you need to understand. SBA doesn't inherently know what your working capital is. Here's an example. Let's say you went out and bought a nice chair tomorrow for your office, and the chair cost $200, let's do $150. You got it from Staples and got it delivered, you assembled it, and you're like, oh, damn, there's always a screw missing from this. Let me contact the post, Nancy can go chase the postman and give me that, that screw back. Uh, and, you know, you assemble the chair and you put the chair down, Okay, and your business got a loan from SBA. The chair is now working capital. But does Javita know you have a chair? How would she know she ha you have that chair? Now, it's sort of different that, you know, if you run a tour agency and the tour agency is on a boat and the boat is registered with the Maritime Registration Authority, well, then they know that's your boat. Um, and that's how they can determine find the working capital. But if it's a chair you just put you just bought yesterday, it's working capital, but they may not know it's there. All right, so that's important to understand. Next, the issue comes up about, well, why do I have to worry about working capital? Well, working capital is an issue when you default. If you're behind on your payments and they go and that goes in default, then they can come and take the working capital. No one wants that to happen. So ultimately, if you think that you're concerned about defaulting and that concern sort of manifests itself sometime at the end of the first year, then you might want to give the loan back. Uh, collateralization 
is not really an issue in the first year because principal and interest is not due the first year. So you're not paying any principal, not paying any interest in the first year, so you're not prone to default. And ultimately, you have to review the contract as well because I've not looked at it in a few months. But I think that if you can, you can return the loan within the first year in full and not be owe, not owe any principal or interest. All right, so you're watching this video and you're like, oh, no. Honey, we need to switch our loan amount. I don't want to be collateralized. Well, that's what happened with a lot of viewers. They had taken a $30,000 loan. I had done this video before that, and they still didn't watch the video. And then they're like, oh, no, I don't want to be collateralized. Switch the loan. I'm like, no, you can't. SBA has made clear you can't down 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 a loan. You can't dumb it down. You can't take a loan that's higher and reduce it under. You can't take a loan that's lower and raise it up, but you can't go the other direction on the loan. The only solution is to return the money. Yes. Um, now, if you have a loan offer pending or you're talking with SBA, you haven't signed the contract, yeah, I have had tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of viewers who have followed my advice and taken a loan amount that ironically is exactly the same as everyone else, 24900 I said it on one video and it just seemed to resonate and then viewers just kept on saying, I did 24900 I did 24900 you did, I, we all did, you did 24900 Everyone did exactly 24900 They're like, you know, SBA is like, Who's this person telling them to do 24,900? Another 24, it's never 24,950, it's 24,900. That literally was the situation. And I just, you know, I, I could just sense the eyes rolling on the other side of SBA. It's like, there's another one of those 24,900 people. Those people did that. Now, a strange twist has occurred for those, some of those people. And I got to go over that. Some of those people took the money because they didn't want to be collateralized. Now they think they absolutely have to get more money because they're not going to survive the pandemic into January with 24900 So a lot of those viewers are now going back and asking more benefits. You can do that. So if you took a lower amount so that you were not collateralized and now you want to increase it, the contract allows you to increase your loan within the first two years, you can do that. How do you do it? You go through recon. How easy is it? It's very difficult. It's not easy. It's one of the hardest things to do is increase a loan after you accepted the loan. Uh, but people are doing it. And so it's based upon revenue minus cost of goods sold divided by two, which is usually the amount of the loan offer they got, gave you before. And you said, no, uh, I'll take 24900 Now you're coming back. Saying, I, I, you know, I, I changed my mind. I think I sort of want that. Sorry. <laughs> you had one chance. Uh, no, but you, you, you can have more than one chance. So that's that. Uh, if you have questions in today's video, drop in the comments below. Coming up tomorrow morning, this morning's LA. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, you know, there's always a good and the bad. And one of the bads is I don't know what happened to a lot of my EIDL loan uh, candidates who were waiting to get things done, were still stuck, were getting progress. And unfortunately, a lot of them... Uh, you know, a lot of them just took off. And that's the, you know, that's the sad thing about doing a channel, that you become a family and that sometimes you lose family members. I specifically remember one or two viewers um, who jumped into early, early week one or week two or week three live chats. Yes, I used to do live chats. One of them was Viet Tube, and he would tell people, you got to tip this kid. You got to tip them in the in the live chat, which YouTube has a has a super chat, a tip thing. And uh, it was wonderful. It was and then there was always um, there was an elderly woman who owned a business who had problems with her eye. And I think her name was Jean, and you know she was struggling to get her things approved, and she was emailing Javita. So it's sad to not know what happened to a lot of those viewers. I did some one-on-one -on -one with them on camera. One was a taped broadcast. It was a lot of fun, and I should, I should reach out to him and do that again. Uh, and another one, I did an actual recap with that viewer. He was a painter. Philip Morgan. Um, so it was really a lot of fun. And, you know, that is one of the negatives when you get a, to be a bigger channel. You don't have that tight family environment. My, uh, my ability to sometimes capture that is being able to comment with the viewers who are subscribers that jump in the comments as soon as the video goes live because that's usually the best time to see me responding back to them. And so I see their names. I see their names every single video and I, I, it, that makes it very familiar. So 
Go to the front of this channel, hit the subscribe. And this was not a way to get you to subscribe. I just, just happened to say it. Go to the front of this channel and hit the subscribe button and the alert button so you get alert. And yeah, when a video goes live, I generally respond to the comments as soon as the video goes live, with the exception of maybe the rent video, because that's sort of a rush job uh, due to the timing schedule. But all the other ones, I'm there and I usually respond to the comments for the first 30 minutes. So, um, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what happened with your EID alone. Uh, coming up tomorrow morning is Morning to LLA. As always, stay informed, stay motivated, stay smiling. Keep that scarf on duty. <laughs> stay alive. <laughs>